Welcome to the Union Bank Court here at the Alina Fieldhouse, where tonight WSN brings you the consolation match of the 35th annual tip-off classic tournament from Elida. My name is Mark Shines. My players do play-by-play. Play. Alongside your color commentary, Mr. Evan Skilder. Evan, let's talk about the Bath Wildcats first. Last night they lost 31 to 53 to LCC. Played a good first quarter, and it kind of got away from them. Yeah, they had a really tough night last night. They turned the ball over quite a bit. They couldn't handle the LCC pressure. The T-Birds are a great team. They put a, a lot of points on the board, and they did it quickly. So Bath tonight just going to have to respond and play a, well, a lot better than they did an evening ago. Let's talk about our keys to the game. Our keys brought to you tonight by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area, serving Lima for over 100 years, and we are proud to call this home. Evan, keys to the game tonight for the Bath Wildcats. Well, it starts with a short memory. Last night, tough night. They lost by a bunch. They turned the ball over a ton. And so, look, you can't let one loss compound and become two losses. You can't let one bad night become two in a row. This is a team that has a lot of basketball in front of them. They just have to forget about last night, come out, play their game, and, and do what they can to come out of here with a victory. And second, they have to limit turnovers. We talked about that LCC pressure from a night ago. They turned the ball over 20 times, did the Wildcats. That's far too many. I know it's early, but people use that excuse far too much you have to take care of the basketball it's time to really play and it's time to limit those turnovers the United Bulldogs were kind of a tale of two halves last night Evan they played extremely well in the first half Shawnee played extremely well in the second half United comes away with a four-point loss how about keys to the game tonight for the Bulldogs well you said it best last night they got out to a big lead and they have to work on momentum tonight they had a 17 point lead in the first half 11 point lead at halftime they weren't able to hold on so if they can get out to an early lead they have to make sure that they they keep the foot on the gas and finish with a victory. And then seconds limit fouls. This Bath team did not shoot well last night, uh, but they shot 8 of 12 from the field. So Elida needs to make this Wildcat team prove they can hit from the field and make sure they keep them away from the free throw line. Our pregame keys tonight are brought to you by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area. Serving Lima for over 100 years, we are proud to call this home. We've got our keys in. We've got the consolation match coming up. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Tonight's premier sponsor is the State Bank. Contact the State Bank for all your banking and financial services needs. Visit yourstatebank.com. Member of FDIC, equal housing lender. Consolation match. It's the Bath Wildcats. It's the Elida Bulldogs. My name is Mark Shane. One slide me is Evan Skilder. Evan, uh, you know, I I've been as part of this tournament for a long, long time, and nobody wants to leave this Saturday night being 0-2. No question, <laughs> yeah. no question. Both these teams with a tough loss last night, but these are two teams that go through a grind in the WBL schedule. They'll see each other again later on, and so uh, they're familiar with each other. They're looking forward to playing each other here, and, and I think we're in for a good one no matter what. Let's, let's put our starting lineups on the board tonight. The Bath Wildcats are the visitors. They will start Craig Crawford. He wears Trey Crawford. He wears number two, 5'11", senior. Number three is Logan Markley, 6'4", sophomore. Number 12, Xavier Tickle, 6'1", junior. Number 13 is Jackson Foster, a 6'2", junior. And number 21 is Brennan Ryan. He is a 6'0", senior. For the Atlanta Bulldogs and Coach Matt Tabler's team, they will start tonight. Zori Island, who wears number zero. Zori is a junior. Had some injury issues last night. We we'll hope he is healthy enough to play and compete at full strength tonight. Number one is Seth Sharp. He's a senior. Number 10 is Parker Krim, a sophomore. Uh, number four is Amari Wash. He is a sophomore. Led this team last night with nine points, three steals, five rebounds, and played very well. On the other part of that is the senior, David Etzcorn. He had 16 last night and six boards, and he wears number 31. Our officials tonight, A.J. Kremer, Mitch Owen, and Macaulay Williams. And we're ready for action from the Elida Fieldhouse. Ball's tipped in the backcourt to Zori Island. This is an incredibly athletic Elida team, a team that likes to get out and transition and move. They've got a lot of great guards. They're double dribble there on Island, but I'm looking forward to seeing them run the court a little bit tonight. A little bit out of sync on the opening possession, 11 seconds in. We get a double dribble call, and Elida will come with pressure. Ball goes into the backcourt to Trey Crawford. Playing against a team that turned the ball over 20 times, so not surprising to see them pressuring full court. Number 12 is Xavier Tickle. This is Jackson Foster with a basketball now. Bounce pass inside, and the first basket goes to Trey Crawford. That's a great cut to the basket right there. Crawford's man turned his head, and he just went straight there. Good find, good basket. David Etzcorn beat his man, but had the ball tipped out of bounds from behind. Bath actually played pretty well in the opening quarter against Shawnee last night. They trailed 14-9, but then the Indians turned it on, and 
the middle two quarters were decidedly Indian uh, success ratio, and Bass struggled after that. Here's bounce pass inside, and Sharp will go off basket, off glass, and score. It's America's play right there, screen the screener. Pretty simple play that most teams should be able to defend well, but that was a wide open look. Good job by Bath. Pass goes inbounds to Foster. He has to give it back up. Here's a trap. They got Crawford hemmed in. Pardon me, that was a good job by Elida. Not great defense by Bath on that inbound. Markley comes off the screen and loses the ball to Sharp. Seth Sharp throws it ahead and off glass and scoring will be Amari Wash. And that's that athleticism. Everyone running the floor for Elida. Easy layup at the other end, turning turnovers into points. 4 2 early on, Bulldogs. Here's Foster. Coach Taylor wanted to push off there as 13 Jackson Foster's trying to get open on the wing. Yet another turnover, this time to Krim. And off glass again goes Zori Island. They've got three layups. That's four points off turnovers right there. In a row for Elida. Nice job defending on the perimeter. Foster. Foster comes off a screen. Gives it up. This jumper will be by Tickles. Avery Tickles long. And here's Wash. Good set from Bath. I think they missed the roll man on that screen on the wing, but, it's, but still a good look from Tickle, who led the team with 13 points last night. Parker Krim trying to muscle up inside. Has to throw it back out to Etzcorn. Sharp out of the corner for three. And we're going to get a push. Our first foul of the basketball game will go to Elida. This quarter tonight uh, is sponsored by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area, serving Lima for over 100 years. Elida still with that full court pressure. They're just going man to man, challenging Bath to bring it up amongst the pressure. We'll run a jump action right there. Got the ball into the hands of Crawford and now Markley. Crawford in the corner. Path has a size advantage inside, but they haven't gone there. To the rim and unable to finish his tickle. Here's Island the other way and bounced it off a wildcat leg. Tickle has to know if he's driving. He's going to draw that help. He had his man Ryan wide open underneath the basket. Brendan Ryan stands six foot seven, and so when you see that help come over, you know someone else is open, and oftentimes it's a guy on the block. Here's Sharp, and we're going to get a foul that will go against Bath. That will go to, to Markley. Each team has a foul now. Bob way out on top to Parker Krim. Sharp. And you see Amari Wash resetting the offense. Smart two for a team that gave up a 17 point lead. A little lead here, just trying to make sure they're staying in the flow of their offense. Long three, rebound bounces out to Markley. Comes Logan. Tickle's got a lane to the goal and lost the basketball on the way there. Here's Wash out in transition, and he finishes again. Another turnover that turns into points. Right there, Tickle had a lane to the basket, but he noticed it late or just made his decision late. Ran right into the defense, and a good job. That's two steals so far tonight for Parker Krim. Foster comes off a screen. Markley's going to get a three look. Logan's shot bounces off the rim. Long rebound. And Island resets. A couple of guys waiting at the scores table, as you might expect, on the second night of the opening weekend. Wash baseline, and that one will not go. Krim rebounds and fights it up and will draw contact. Great patience from Krim underneath. Got the rebound, little head fake. Got both guys up in the air. Look at what he does right here. He's got two guys there, so he fakes up. Both go, and when he goes up, he draws that foul. Good job from him. Two free throws coming up. The foul went to Brennan Ryan. Our free throw sponsor tonight is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken with 4.06 to go. We get a couple of subs. The first is the very athletic Evan Jackson. A junior had a really nice dunk last night in the basketball game. And senior Jackson Kovalt. Two pretty good athletes coming in off the bench for Coach Tabler. It's got to be nice 
to know you still don't lose any athleticism when you go deep onto your bench. Score stays the same on the Web Insurance Agency scoreboard as both free throws bounce out. 8-2 early on, Bulldogs. Halfway through quarter number one. Shawnee and Lima Central Catholic in the finals after this game. And we're going to get a five-second count as the Wildcats get into their offense very quickly. Now you have to be aware right there. That's great on-ball defense from Amari Wash, a really athletic kid. It's hard to break free from him. So you have to have that internal clock going. You know, you can only have it five seconds closely guarded. Kind of a lapse right there for Bath and another turnover. That's scoring for three, bounces off the rim. The rebound was secured originally by Parker Krim. That went off his leg out of bounds to the Wildcats. Yeah, he disagrees, as you can see there on the screen. It looked like he brought that ball down and went right off of his knee. Referees right on it. Replay sponsor tonight is Four Season Tees. We appreciate them. Crawford. It's the ball to bounds across midcourt. Here's Ryan, skip pass, Foster. Koval tipped it away from him, but to a Wildcat, Markley. And we're going to contact that will allow Xavier Tickle to be fouled as he was headed to the rim. So too much contact up top, but you can see a couple times, Bath just kind of careless with the basketball. We talked about how many turnovers they had a night ago, and we don't want to hammer on that point too much, but ultimately you can't make errors that are unforced either. Bath needs to take care of the basketball. They need to bring the catch or bring the pass in, excuse me. Make sure they're making hard passes. Evan Jackson got his first foul. The team's second of the, of the opening quarter. Here's Tickle going to the rim and he will draw contact. Let's see if it's a shooting foul. It is. Also at that dead ball, Tanner Roberts checked in as senior for Matt Taylor's team. That foul went to Seth Sharp into the free throw line. Will go Xavier Tickle. Xavier had 13 points last night, did not make it to the free throw line. He was one of only four Bath Wildcats that scored last night, and actually three of them had more than two points, so a team that really needs to find some scoring from other sources in this one tonight. Here's Zach Welch, we'll checked anywhere as number 14, a six-foot sophomore for Bath. And that one also misses. Welch comes in and gets a rebound. Markley. Light has been very good in this man-to-man -man in the opening quarter, giving up just two points in five minutes. Here's Welch. Wildcats, when they do take care of the ball, they've been pretty patient, looking for good shots. Skip pass. Tickle tried to go baseline, got cut off by Kovalt. That shot bounces long. Markley battles the rebound, tips it to Welsh. Foster wanted to load up, and they got to him in a hurry. You see how quick and athletic this Elida team is. It looks like there's a sliver of space, but they close it off quickly. Markley goes baseline and throws it away, trying to hit a cutter coming down the lane. It wasn't there. Jackson had it go off his leg. And Bath I will go back the other way. Island looks like he's grabbing that left arm a little bit after tipping that pass away. Markley, I think the ball shipped out of bounds, and it was. Elida continues to bring subs in as Parker Krim is back in, as is David Etzkorn. And Bath will bring in Brent Ryan again, and Markley will get a break. Yeah, I think Ryan, the biggest body on the Wildcat team, came right back in as they saw Parker Krim going into the game, the biggest body for Elida, so those two Probably going to be matched up for most of the evening. Jackson Foster comes off a screen. Really good hedge right there it from was, Krim. It yeah. And Island strips it away. Here's Zori the other way. And Zori Island will draw contact. Maybe not much size for Island, but you see right here, he is not afraid of contact. You see a lot of guys shy away from the basket when there's pressure, but Island right there goes right into it to draw the foul. He'll get two free throws. Xavier, Bath now with three. Xavier Tickle, Tickle gets the foul. Our free throws that are brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Island did not go to the free throw line last night. He made one field goal. It was a three-pointer. So he's now one for one on the season. 
And in for Bath is number five, Joe Mosley, a 5'7 senior. Highland only played 15 minutes last night as well, a little hampered by injury. Yeah, he, he, they left. It looked like it was pretty serious to be able to come back and play last night and obviously started and played well here in the opening six minutes. If Crawford just got the ball, and he's trapped in a bad spot. Gets it out of the trap. Crawford trying to get over midcourt and get a 10 count. Solid defense from the Bulldogs. Well, that all starts with the entry pass going right into the corner where they knew Elida was trying to trap. You have to be heads up there and know you can't get it to the corner against a team that's this quick and is looking to trap. That took off a lot of time from the clock and ultimately Bath not able to get it across in 10 seconds. Island backing off a little bit on him. He still spins to the lane and scoop shot that won't go. Tipped around. Here comes Welsh. Trademark of a Tabler coach team. Good job in transition defense for Elida. Island was on the deck under the basket, got up and was one of the first ones down the floor. Foster long three. Welsh gets another rebound. Very active here in the opening quarter. He's had a chance to get out and play. Now he's going to get a three look out of the corner that bounces around. That's going swoops in to grab the rebound. Island the other way, under a minute to go. Our scoreboard tonight is sponsored by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and in Bluffton. It's 10 to 2, Elida early on here in the opening quarter. Bulldogs will take their time yep. here, try to get the last shot. Maybe a little bit surprised Bath isn't coming out trying to speed them up some, seeing as they're down eight. But ultimately, you don't want to go down 12, so they want to well, make sure they don't do anything wrong. You know, wrong the other the thing, Evan, with our new foul rule, they have a foul to give. They do. They could come out and be very aggressive with the new foul rule where you shoot the fifth of each quarter that each team has three. So that uh, foul to give situation was there, what would not have cost them anything. Here's. Pass inside goes awry, picked up by Mosley. Crawford's going to get a look. Oh, it bounced out. Welsh with another rebound, and the quarter comes to an end. It's a good one if you're a lighter Bulldog. You'll take a 10 to 2 lead in the first quarter break. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're back at the Union Bank Court here at the Elida Fieldhouse. Our premier sponsor tonight for the Elida Bulldogs is John Stocker, DDS. Providing dental care for dental for high school and for sports fans. 10-2 early on for the Elida Bulldogs. We should also mention our second quarter tonight is sponsored by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac. Here's Premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area. Serving Lima for over 100 years, and we are proud to call this home. Bath gets the ball first, Evan. That's well, a good quarter from Elida. Nice job pressuring. The Wildcats into some turnovers and turning those turnovers into points. A majority of their points coming off turnovers right now in transition. But Bath's also gotten some open looks as you see a turnover early on here. We'll talk about those later. Zori Island, Amari Wash, David Etzkorn. Seth Sharp gets a three look. Bounces around, but Island gets the rebound in the corner. Wash throws it inside. Sharp ball fakes and scores inside. Seth Sharp has a basket in each quarter for four points. Good discipline at the basket there from Sharp. Good patience, little head fake, and went up and scored. We saw Krim do that earlier. Bath in these open looks, they're just not able to hit. They're moving the ball relatively well once they get to the half court. Barkley over penetrated to the baseline and lost it. Bounced past the head, and they just couldn't quite secure it for the layup. Good transition effort, though. Just as I say, they're doing a nice job in the half court. <laughs> yeah. They turn one over. There's Eli Jesko will become a Bath Wildcat to enter. But first of all, we're going to get a Metzger Financial Services timeout. Metzger Financial Services helping you plan your financial future. You can call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. We're back in a moment. You're watching High School Basketball, WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Webb Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and in Bluffton. It is 12-2 Bulldogs. Bath takes the first time out of the game at 7-10 to go in the second quarter. This is Eli Jesko inbounding the ball. It's checked in a moment ago. Hard trap. 
It's a one-two-one-one trap. They're trying to get him to throw the ball into the corner. Good job by Bath of breaking that down. Now they just need to string together a good possession. We haven't seen one of these in a while for the Wildcats. Trey Crawford, who has the basketball, has the only points for Bath so far in the basketball game. This is Welsh trying to go baseline. That score has him. Two solid football players this past season for their two teams. Markley wants to go baseline again, gets cut off. Has to throw it out top to Jesko. Crawford. Great perimeter defense from Elida, allowing zero seams. And when they do, a good job helping, but right there, a guy goes down and Bath takes advantage. Eli Jesko was able to muscle in and get a basket. Mm. That's corn in transition, that was pretty. That's a great cut, but an even better find right there by Island. I love that basket as Elida gives up a basket and gets one right back two seconds later. David Escorn, who had 16 last night and six rebounds, has his first basket of the consolation game. 14-4. Crawford looking for a accept the screen. And Island's not giving him anywhere to go. Really good pressure, Zori Island. I love the attitude. Yeah. I love the effort from Island. He's staying fired up. A lot of people don't like it when a guy gets in another yeah. one's face. But you know what? As long as it's not over the top, sometimes you, you want to see that fire from a team, especially one that fell last night in a tough fashion. Well, the, you're right. But the official walked up to him and said, you better tone it down a little bit. And at the same time, Coach Tabor took him out of the game. So I think he appreciates his aggressiveness. But you're right. Got to get that a bit under control. Here's Markley diving for a loose ball. But Jackson gets it instead. Kovalt. We've got Krum open inside. We got foul away from the ball as Etzcorn hit the floor. Yeah, I didn't see what was going on over there. Maybe on the replay we'll see it. It's on the backside block. Yeah, he's just trying to get or make a cut. Excuse me. He gets knocked down. It's the first Zach foul. Welch. Yeah, Zach Welch gets the foul call. It's the first of the second quarter. It's a lob out to Jackson. And Amari Wash. Here's that score trying to go baseline. Bounces it inside, and that was a nice pass. Jackson gets his own rebound and goes right back up and scores. Evan Jackson's first basket of the evening. Had six really crucial points last night in the second half for Elida. Crawford trying to spin, and there's the help. And that caused the travel. They've been good on ball and really good off ball help, as we see on the uh, replay tonight brought to you by Four Season Tees. Yeah, I love what Wash did right there. He comes out, not only does he come over and help, but he comes outside of the lane. So if he may, if he takes contact, there's no blocking foul right there. Really good job understanding positioning and getting far enough out. There's Jackson going to the rim again and goes up, and that one rolled out on him. I don't know how that missed. That was a really good job getting around two defenders. Here comes Zori Island and Tanner Roberts into the game. Still and haven't I, seen Bath go inside too much to Brennan Ryan, who has about, I don't know, three or four inches on his opponent, uh, Krim. Height-wise. Height-wise, excuse me. Krim yes. has it uh, width-wise. Krim, Krim is a big That muscular body. shoulder he's got right there. There's great pressure by Island. There's a dive for a loose ball, and Island rips it away. Zori Island to the rim and scores. Good body control. Again, you see him going into the contact. That time not enough for a foul, but it didn't matter as he finished right through it. Again, small body, but he is so strong. This jumper will be by Jesko out of the corner. Jackson rebounds. Another good look for Bath that doesn't find the bottom of the net. Just a tough night shooting the basketball. And that ball stripped away as baseline action occurs. Here's Markley. Long pass, and it's knocked out of bounds by Tanner Roberts. Our instant replays tonight are brought to you by Four Season Tees, offering over 750 high-definition championship pro courses. Book your tee time today at 567-712-2040. Zach Welch. Out of the corner is Joe Mosley. Mosley trying to get into the rim. This, Jesko will shoot that ball, bounces around, and Island gets a rebound. Kind of a catalyst this evening for what goes on. 
Defensively and offensively, Cobalt goes baseline and gets called for an offensive foul. Jackson Cobalt's first foul of the game. Good positioning right here from Eli Jesko, able to stay in front of his man, absorb some contact. Parker Krim comes out, and you know, you really like it as a coach, and I know you're coaching now up at, uh, at Bluffton. When a young man plays himself so hard, he's got to come out. You can see him sucking air over there because he worked really, really hard. How often as a coach have you gotten mad at a player for working so hard that yeah. he asked for a sub? Yeah, never. You don't. You, you don't. don't. No, Absolutely. you don't. Get him the breather, get him back as soon yep. as you yeah, can. That's, that's exactly fantastic right. stuff. Eighteen to four, Elida. Bass had a basket in each quarter, and that's it. It's just very good Elida defense. Working from behind the screen is Mosley. Jackson Foster gets a look out of the corner, and that's a three ball. And that was a good closeout from Island right there, but a nice finish from the corner. A much needed three is we get back to within 11. A 6 2, just able to jump over the defender. That shot's blocked inside, but we're going to get a foul to take place. Tanner Roberts is working inside. Let's see what happens on our instant replay brought to you by Four C's and T's. Tough to tell right there. Ryan doesn't agree, but either way, it's his first team second. Again, new foul tracking rules this year. Yeah. Fouls will reset every quarter rather than every half. Our Lee's famous recipe, chicken free throws. That one didn't fall. Might have struggled a little bit at the free throw line last night as well. That one goes for Tanner Roberts, his first point of the game. And he will earn a seat on the bench with that hard work he just brought to the table. Jackson Foster had that three a moment ago, had one last night too, had nine points last night. Second on to Xavier Tickle in scoring for Bath. It's Jackson Foster right here with Koval guarding him. Foster's going to get another three from the other corner. Back-to-back -back threes, Jackson Foster. Really really good movement right there. They went back and forth, Foster. And number three in the corner, Logan Markley. Finally, Foster finding the space to hit another two in a row for him. Here he is right back in the game. He got the break, and he got a basket. Parker Krim muscles up inside. Great footwork from Krim right there, end-to-end. -end. Foster again for three. Heat check, couldn't get three in a row. Island the other way. That's going to the rim. Krim battling for that rebound. Look at the hustle right there. Fantastic job by both teams. Our presenting sponsor tonight is the State Bank. Contact State Bank for your banking and financial service needs. Visit statebank.com, a member FDIC equal housing lender. Someone forgot to tell these guys it's a <laughs> consolation game. They yeah. got down on the floor. Well, get that loose ball. Jackson Foster doing a little extra duty. He walks out with the big mop. That should be worth two points on the scoreboard, I think. Do you agree? You know, that'd be interesting because they'd be fighting over that mop <laughs> at that point. Every act of kindness. <laughs> yeah, yeah that extra point or two. You know what? Now his mom's going to expect him to do it at home. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Here's Island working baseline. Little floater. Mm. That was pretty. Zori Island leads all scorers now with eight, four in each quarter. Yeah, Island's on fire right now, too. He's so quick. You see him right there almost get a steal. Good job keeping his dribble, though, by Joe Mosley. And now what happened? Somebody Mosley kicked it to get, to get it free. And we'll get a look here. Again, you see two guys on the floor trying to fight for the ball. Oh, he did kick it, yep. Nice replay that time by our four-season tees. Minute 34 to go here. It is 23-10 in the second quarter. Elida on our web insurance scoreboard. Etzgorn looking for a screen. Got it that time from Krim to the rim. And Etzgorn goes up. Krim fights for the rebound. And did he get fouled? He did not. Just lost it out of bounds. I like that take right there from Etzgorn, though. Dribbles between two guys. 
big, hard jump stop, goes up strong. Obviously doesn't finish, but an offensive rebound on the other end because he drew so much help. 13-point lead. The Wildcats had to nine a moment ago. Last two baskets have gone the way of the Bulldogs. Here's Markley. Good position inside by Ryan, and that's just not going in there. There's Welch. Now Markley in the other corner. Welch again. That's scoring with him. Jackson Foster works the lane, goes up from 15 under good pressure, and Sharp rips the rebound away from a teammate. More and good defense. Not a good shot from back there. Sorry to cut you off. That's 45 to go, and like we saw in the opening quarter, Island's going to walk the ball over to midcourt and just set up a last play. Bath has just a single foul. Bath has just two fouls in the quarter. But they're going to choose just to stay back with it with his 13-point deficit. Only scored two points in the first quarter, so their offense quite a bit better here in the second, but defensively still not able to get a ton of stops. 13-point deficit. Here we go. Island works the lane, passes inside to Krim, but it's stolen away, at least momentarily. And uh, Welch has hands on the ball and was laying on the end sideline end line. Here's Evan Jackson back in, Could use some size inside on this play with 2.3 to go. Yeah, I have to imagine looking for some kind of lob here. With a Matter screen. of fact, they have it if they want it. Yeah, screen set by Parker Krim. It's set. If they want to run it. Bass trying to get Markley in the way there. Wash out of the corner. And we're going to get a foul on the rebound. And let's see if it's a shooting foul or not. It's going to be a two-shot foul. Yeah, but it shouldn't be because that foul occurred before the rebound. So Jackson was jumping up trying to tap it into the basket. But before he even made contact, you'll see here, uh, maybe we, right before the ball got to him was when the foul occurred. So technically wouldn't be a free throw or, uh, excuse me, a shooting foul, but referee sees it differently. Logan Markley was the one who picked up the foul for back and under Jackson, who makes the second of, free, of the free throws. That gives him three points in the game, and it gives Elida a 24-10 to lead as we end the first 16 minutes. Half number two coming up after this. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. We're back at the Union Court Bank Court here at the Elida Fieldhouse. Our free throw sponsor tonight is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken and Lima, Wapak Dolphins, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Our timeout sponsor tonight is Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Evan Skilter, we got a stat page at halftime. Anything jump off the page at you? Well, the Wildcats have turned it over 13 times. That's over half their total from a night ago. They need to take care of the basketball against this very athletic Elida team, a team that's scored a lot of points in transition off of those turnovers, right? So it's been a tough quarter, and Bath also not shooting very well. They're 26% from the field. They're getting some open looks, as we said, but they're just not finding the bottom of the net. They really need to work on getting the ball to the rim, perhaps. I know it's tough against a team that is doing a nice job on the perimeter, but closer the look, the better the chances. Seven Bulldogs scored in the opening half. Zori Island led them with eight. Jackson Foster made two threes for the Wildcats. He leads them in scoring with six as we're in the second half action. Working inside, trying to get the rim is Tickle. Gives it up to Brent Ryan. Ryan's trying to back Crib down, and... Shoots it over the rim. Tickle gets the rebound, but it's knocked out of bounds by Amari Wash. They finally go inside right there. Ryan might have lost the handle on his way up. Either way, a closer look like we just said. They just need to finish those chances. Our third quarter sponsor tonight is Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area, serving Lima for over 100 years. We are proud to call this home. There's a lot of loose ball, and Escorn heads the other way. Escorn gets blocked out of bounds to me. It's a good catch, Mark hey, Shine. I, I saved you, man. I Referee saved you. Referee wants the ball back. Yeah, up. I know. Mark Shine standing here in all his glory with yeah. the basketball. Referee says, sir, yeah, sir, at, you're not playing. At, at, at my age, Evan, just to touch the ball. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any eligibility left. You should have thrown the ball to somebody else. This is Wash on top. His team leads by 14. 
on the Web Insurance Agency scoreboard as he's directing traffic. Trying to go to a 1 4 set. Seth Sharp. And then Parker Crib. And they reset bit, again, yeah. Yeah, a little bit out of sorts right now, trying to figure out where they're supposed to start the set, when they're supposed to cut. Island into the lane, becomes a double figure score with 10. That was nice from Island right there. Took a little bump and then got himself sorted nice and balanced as he released at the top of that jump. It's textbook jump shot. 26 10. Foster comes off a screen. Eli has been very good at getting out and hedging on screens and either hedging or switching them. They did a nice job defensively with that. To the rim and tickle scores, or does he run over somebody? Basket counts. That's a tough finish right there from Xavier Tickle. Gets inside, takes contact from the big body of Krim, and he's able to finish and get the free throw. That's what Bath needed here. So we're going to get a Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw from Xavier Tickle. He missed a two back in the opening quarter. The only two that Bath has taken so far this evening. That scoring actively grabs the rebound. Island's looking inside the crib. Now Island backs it down. Here's crib. Crib working, 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 and goes up strong. Gets a block by Ryan, but the ball's tipped away, and crib hustles into that rebound and then loses it to Trey Crawford. Nice job by Bath. That's a big body of crib coming down toward the basket, but they stayed strong. Jackson Foster's long three, and somebody went flying out of bounds. Looks like Island went flying. Let's take a look again on our four-season tease replay. We well, got run over right there <laughs> by Trey Crawford. Looking to see how the foul goes because Island thinks he gets the ball out of bounds, and so does Trey Crawford. Oh, Trey Crawford, uh, excuse me, Zori Island does get his first foul of the game. Hmm. That was a strange play either way. So tough one to make a call on. And first foul or second foul, excuse me, the half for Elida as they almost get a turnover. Foster wants to go up again. That jumper goes from inside the lane. He has his first basket. It's not a three-point field goal. There's a steal. Bath trailing by 12, trying to make some noise here. Now remember, Elida got up by 17 on Shawnee yesterday. Tickle was headed to the rim when he drew contact. And that foul goes to Tanner Roberts, I believe. Let's see. Said oh, it's Amari Wash. Yes, it was four, not five. My mistake. Sorry, Mark. We said in the keys that Elida needs to make sure they utilize momentum and keep their foot on the gas. Right now, they're leaving the door open for Bath as they're starting to find some momentum. Xavier Tickle, Logan Markley in the corner, looks inside. Foster trying to post up, turn around jumper. He becomes a double-figure scorer with 10. And it's a 10-point game. And we're going to get a blocking foul. Island was headed to the rim, and Trey Crawford got in his road. Shooting foul? It was a shooting foul. It is. So just a little bit late sliding over right there was Trey Crawford. Oh, maybe not. Oh, there we I go. I thought he okay. put the signal up for that. Trey Crawford gets his first foul, and Zori Island will head to the free throw line. He's got 10 points tonight and made two free throws back in the first quarter. And now we got a little bit of discussion. Nope, we're going to take it out of bounds. Probably the right call. The replay started a little bit after the contact, so it was hard to tell from that. But it did look like the foul occurred before he started to go up. Coach Tabor politely asking the official why the call was changed. It came from the center official, Macaulay Williams. And what he saw is why we're taking it out of bounds here. Lob out front to Seth Sharp. Evan Jackson came across the screen. Sharp works the lane and will be fouled by Zach Welch, his second foul. Tight defense from Bath, but you have to be careful when you're playing tight defense to not take a step into a ball handler when he's headed to the basket. That's exactly what happened right there. 
three, three fouls against Bath. Three minutes into quarter three, each team has three fouls. Wash. Tickle gets it his way. He couldn't get to the rim that time. And Coach Tabor calls a set. High screen. Markley rebounds. Good held defense at the basket for Bath right there. A good spin from Island, but he loves that move. And Bath knew he would go up. Foster goes baseline. He will be fouled by Etzcorn. That's and four Elida fouls. Etzcorn's first, and we will take this one out of bounds, and Bath will be shooting the, I guess we just call it bonus now, Evan. Yeah, and we're going right. to get an Elida timeout. 4.40 to go. It's a Metzger Financial Services timeout, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Back in a moment, you're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. John Stocker DDS is tonight's premier sponsor for the Elida Bulldogs, providing dental care for high school sports fans. Mark Shine, Evan Skilleter here. Matt Tabor takes a timeout, Evan. Yeah, Beth's starting to make a little bit of a run, and Elida not taking care of the basketball as well as they would like to. A couple turnovers, and they're also not getting the looks that they were getting in the first half. So Coach Taylor just trying to get them on the same page. You know, we saw coming out, Elida, their first or second possession, they were struggling to get into the right spots, into the right position. They weren't communicating well. So sometimes a coach just needs to take a timeout, get his guys a couple breaths, and get them back on the same page. There are three Wildcats who have two points, to, and then Jackson Foster has 10 to get them to 16. Zori Island has 10. Six other Bulldogs have scored in the basketball game. Inbound. Crawford loses it, and then Hooker get a bath foul as Crawford lost the basketball to Wash and then got in his way as Wash wanted to skate down the floor. Quick hands by Wash right there. Just a little tap on the basketball. Able to get possession and then runs right into the defender to draw the foul. So both teams with four fouls. And every foul from here on out will give them two free throws. Yeah, we debated that last night. Is it, It's not double bonus like it used to be. It's just bonus now, right? Yeah, you get two shots. I, right. I have to check the rule book and see how we're supposed to. Refer to that, but anyway, it's two-shot foul when you get to five in each quarter. Elida with a 10-point lead on the Web Insurance Agency scoreboard. Here's a three, bounces out. Crimp, very active again. And going inside, but a little hard, and trying to rip the ball down. It will go to Bath. Welsh was in there fighting. That guy battles on the boards for a 5'10 player. Well, he's listed at six foot, I guess. He battles inside on the board, does Welsh. Well, the Wildcats need to turn around and get a body into Elida, push him away from the basket. Not a lot of boxing out right there. It's a lot of Elida to get a lot of hands on the basketball. Here's Trey Crawford being pressured by Amari Wash. And they get it up to Welsh. Welsh has to kick it out to Tickle. Tickle's jumper bounces around and comes down to Jackson Koval, who leads the break. Koval, he finds Tanner Roberts in the corner for a three. A great shot right there from Roberts. He got his feet set. He caught that ball a little bit off balance, but did a nice job being patient enough to get his feet set and get a nice, balanced, clean look. Good push from Jackson Koval to get a, that look out of the corner before the defense was prepared. That's the first three-point field goal tonight for Elida. Baseline Foster gets it blocked. Good play by Roberts back-to-back -back at each end. A really good play. Came off on help right there to block that jump shot. Markley trying to wrestle inside with Parker Krim. Here comes the screen from Krim. Got a mismatch on the yeah. switch. And he's going to get called for backing down and running over Trey Crawford. And that's how you defeat a mismatch right there. Size advantage when they switch that screen. And so just going down kind of as easily as he could was Trey Crawford. That becomes the Parker Krim becomes the first player in the basketball game to get three fouls. Coach Tabor saying he sure did go down easy. <laughs> well, he's not wrong, but that's a big body that is a running big into young a man, one. isn't it? One of the better football players is a sophomore here in Northwest Ohio. Here's Logan Markley. Jackson Foster, good dribble drive, moved to the goal, and he goes off glass. He's got six points in the second quarter, six points in the third quarter, cuts it to 11. Koval trying to get inside. He works, and he will draw contact. 
Foster's fun to watch, man. He does a really nice job getting the ball high above his head on his release on jumpers and on finishes. He's pretty tall, but the way he jumps up when he goes to shoot, he's, six, he's listed at six foot two, but when he releases that ball, he releases it as high as someone that stands six four or six five. Xavier Tickle becomes the first Wildcat to pick up three fouls in the basketball game, and Jackson Kovalt will shoot a pair of free throws. Good to see Jackson on the court, Evan. Late in the football season, they thought he had a very serious knee injury. Turned out to be a, a, a bruise and some other issues, but not nearly as serious as they thought it was. Glad to see the young man get to play his senior year. And he bounced in the second free throw. Elida's done a nice job switching up their full court zone looks. They've gone 1-2-1-1, one, one, one. man. I think they went 2-2-1 at one point as well. And there's a steal. Picked the pocket, did Zori Island, and then he will be fouled from behind by Trey Crawford, who now has three fouls. Usually that'd be a good foul trying to stop a guy in transition, but with five on the board, they'll get two free throws out of it. That is correct. And so headed to the free throw line will be Zori Island. He is two for two this evening. He has 10 points in the basketball game. Sorry. Left-handed Zori Island. Splash. I have decided, Evan, so I can keep the difference between shooting fouls and just bonus to continue to use the zero plus zero, like a one-on-one -on -one situation like you would have marked it. Then I can tell where I'm shooting. It's a free throw from a foul on the floor or a free throw from shooting. Until I figure out a better way. Island again, junior. And makes them both 12 points to lead all scores. Well, he's actually tied with Jackson Foster. Right into a spot where you don't yeah. want to go, but a good job by Bath getting it out quickly. He's mostly got it out of trouble, but they haven't gotten over the 10 second line yet. Welch tips it ahead to Markley, heads up play. Foster heads into the rim, bounce pass. And Markley has to turn it down. Foster again for three, bounces around. The rebound inside, bounce pass goes across the lane. That was a nice play, Mosley to Welsh for a basket. Yeah, great crash right there from Welsh on the back side. Everyone going for the rebound, he just snuck in toward the basket. And Island goes inside and this rebound comes away from Mosley as he heads up the floor. Great job by the Wildcats defense, staying straight up and down. Koval jumps out on Foster before he could unload that three. Here's Welsh. Mosley works inside. Here's Welsh for three. That's a long one, but the rebound to Mosley. Hustles into one. And the ball's tipped loose then. Comes Etzcorn the other way. Yeah, that was a really nice play. Logan Markley slapped it off of Seth Sharp's leg. Yeah, that's a good job. When you can get into position to knock it straight down, more times than not, it's going to go off of the offense's leg. Tonight's sister replay is brought to you by Four Season Tees, offering over 750 high-definition championship pro courses. Book your tee time today at 567-712-2040. And we're going to get a foul that will go against Zori Island, his second, and that will send Joe Mosley to the free throw line, where he has not been yet this season. Our scoreboard is sponsored by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and in Bluffton. And we're looking at the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw. That bounces out for Joe Mosley. Island and Wash back into the game. I guess Island was just over there talking to Wash, right, but it yeah. looked like they were coming in together and they actually weren't. Jackson Foster checks back in as well. Bath has kind of hung around this quarter. It's, they have never gotten it below 10, but they kind of got it in that 10 to 12 range for most of the quarter. That one will splash in for Joe Mosley, his first points of 2023-24 season. As we approach a minute to go, that score and turns the corner, tries to bounce it inside and can't. Mosley has been active here in the last part of the quarter. Bath can get it to within single digits here before the end of the quarter. That'd be big. 
That was a good look for Xavier Tickle. Just didn't go in for him. And as we've seen in the first two quarters, Eli is going to play last shot of the third quarter. Yeah, and this time no fouls to give for Bath. So mm -hmm. even if they did want to come out, it would be a dangerous thing to do. Let's see. Wash walks it over to that corner in front of the Elida scorers table. These two teams will play again here on January 12th, and when they do so, it will be Western Buckeye League action. Bath will open up at Shawnee on the 15th of December in Western Buckeye League play, and on that same night, Elida will be at Kenton in their Western Buckeye League opener. Here comes the screen. Long three, Wash, no. Rebound, Mosley's gonna throw it ahead. Tickle's gonna get a shot. It went in. No, they took, waved it off. Well, we're gonna get a look at it here on the Four Seasons Tees replay. Tough to tell, a good yeah. job passing the ball ahead. The referee's right on it, so it stays 32-21. Hey, Lida, 11-point lead. As we head to the fourth, you're watching high school basketball, WOSN. We're back at the Union Bank Court at the Elida Fieldhouse. Our scoreboard tonight is brought to you by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and in Bluffton. Our next replay sponsor tonight has been Four Season Tees, offering over 750 high-definition championship pro courses. Book your tee time today at 567-712-2040. That quarter was 11-8 Wildcats. They've cut the lead to 11. Stop here in a quick basket would be big for the Wildcats. Island misses and the rebound to Welsh. I'm going to look at the stat page when this game's over and see how many rebounds Zach Welch has. He's been very active. Tickle goes inside, and that one spins out on him. He's had some tough luck tonight. Yeah, he has. That's great help defense inside, though. Eben Jackson right there with his hands straight up and down. And there's a steal. Tickle goes to the lane and will draw a foul from Wash. Amari Wash now has two fouls. And that time a smart foul as he committed the turnover but made the foul before the easy bucket at the other end. Again, fouls reset every quarter. Been a tough night to free throw line for both teams very hastily. It looks like he lied his five for 10. Bath just one of five at the free throw line this evening. 11 point lead for Elida. Here's Mosley, and his pass goes low to Welch, and they just miscommunicated, went out of bounds. Well, it's just kind of a lazy pass, too. One handed, lost the handle perhaps on the way through. He throws it right into the legs of his teammate who's only standing a couple feet away. It's just the kind of things that drive you nuts as a coach. You're trying to climb back into a game, fourth quarter starts, a chance to get it to within single digits, then you do something like that. This quarter is brought to you by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area. Serving Lima for over 100 years, we are proud to call this home. Turnover for Elida, Bath Basketball. They end up giving it right back, so another chance for the Wildcats. And there's a foul out front that will go to Zori Island. He now has a three. Joining Parker Krim. Two quick ones for Elida as well. Nice low crossover right there. You keep the ball low against the guy that's trying to go in and take it away. Oftentimes he's going to hit your arm. Wildcats look, find Mosley. Here's Barkley in the corner. And now Mosley tried to bounce past it inside, but Sharp was right there. That score runs the floor. Good control. Look what Edscorn did right there. Got into yeah. the lane. Nice high jump stop. Wasn't trying to do too much. Got under control. Nothing there, so he just kicked it out. Now Elida gets to run some time off the clock. And send Wash to the rim where his quickness gets him to the lane where he gets fouled. Here it is again, Evan. Yeah, it's a good block up top, but there's too much body underneath. They end up calling the foul on number five, Joe Mosley. That's Mosley's first, first, first against Bath. Our free throws that are sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. That's Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. 
free throw wash is point number 13 for him. And now 14. He has been a solid free throw shooter tonight. I think he's six for six. Yeah, he's doing a lot of things really well right now for yeah. Elida. He does a nice job rebounding as well. That's one thing that he doesn't get enough credit for. He's small, but he, he rebounds really well. Welsh loaded up a three. Mosley hustled into a rebound, but we got a foul going on on the backside. Sharp and Tickle were battling for that rebound. This, the foul went to got Seth, Seth Sharp. Sharp. Yeah. But that's foul number three already for Elida. So they're starting to rack up those fouls, getting closer to five. It's a lob out front, Foster. Jackson pull up jumper. Mm. He's got 14 in the game now. And Bath is on, down to 11. And right back to the other way comes Amari Wash to score his points five and six. Yeah, almost out of control. Looked like he shuffled a little bit, but. By the time he was under the rim, able to get under control, flip it up and in. Amari had not scored since he had four points in the opening quarter. Here's Tickle inside, doubled up, and it went off his leg. Good help from Seth Sharp. Yeah, as soon as that ball went inside, two guys from Elida converged to knock that down and off of the leg of Bath. And tickle, excuse me. Backdoor cut. Shot missed by Escorn, but he draws contact in the process. We'll head to the free throw line. Nice little play right there. Bath over committing on the wing. And so Escorn, instead of going all the way out there, just a little back door, nice find, and draws the foul. Two against Bath and number four against Xavier Tickle. And to the free throw line will be David Etzcorn. He was five of six there last evening and has not been there yet tonight. No one coming to the table. Ryan's over there now, so Tickle will take a seat. Probably not for long, though, down 14, maybe 15 after this free throw. It's another Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw for Etzcorn. Makes them both. He's got a good stroke going this year. <laughs> Wash tips it away from Mosley, and they throw it ahead to Welsh. Markley gets a look at three. High for the rebound is Zori Island. Again, see that right yes, there? I Island did. in the right spot. Gets up really high to pull that board down. Spins into the lane, kicks it out to Sharp. Passes a little bit hard to handle, and Sharp lost it out of bounds. Yeah, you know, it's a good pass. You see Coach Tabler on the sideline not happy about it because, you know what, it ends up being a turnover. And, when you're up this much, you don't need to do anything fancy like that. Timeout Bath, that's a Metzger Financial Services timeout, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Back in a moment, you're watching High School back Basketball on WOSN. We're back at the Elida Field House where tonight's presenting sponsor is the State Bank. Contact the State Bank for your banking and financial service needs. Visit yourstatebank.com. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender. 5.09 to go in the fourth. Bath calls their second time out. Yeah, Elida starting to get away from them a little bit. Bath had a nice little run in the third quarter, ended up winning that quarter. But right now, Elida's pressure making it really tough on Bath to find any good looks. And they're able to score at the other end, increasing this lead. Sorry, Island has 14 to lead Elida. Jackson Foster has 14 of Bass, 23 points to lead them. That's Jackson with the basketball right there. As he's trying to get away from Wash and can't. Welsh. Markley gets a three look. Escorn rebounds. Good strong physical rebounding for Elida tonight. Everyone in there. Done a nice job being strong, getting up high, pulling those boards in. A little Amari. mismatch here. Amari Wash works into the lane and traveled. Brennan Ryan was there, just his size kept him from getting to the rim. You can see it again. Mm. And Markley will inbound. Welsh. Foster, pull-up jumper from Jackson Foster, short. Parker Krim rebounds. 
Bath is to the stage of the game where they just need to take some early shots and try to claw back into this quickly. Matt Tabor with 4.08 to go calls his timeout. It's a Metzger Financial Services timeout. You're watching High School Basketball, WOSN. The premier sponsor tonight for the United Bulldogs is John Stocker, DDS, providing dental care for high school sports fans. Mark Schein, Evan Skeletor with 4.08 to go. Coach Tabor is talking about taking care of the basketball, isn't he, Evan? Absolutely. You only have four minutes left. You're up by 15, and you had plenty of timeouts to spare. He had only used one, so still three remaining after taking his second there. Just wants to get his guys on the same page, give the game plan for the final minutes here to make sure they close this out with a victory. Inbound ball to Amari Wash. He's guarded by Eli Jesko. And into the rim he goes and right to the rim. Amari Wash had a four in the opening quarter and now four in this quarter. Pushes the lead to 17. Just what Coach wanted coming out of a timeout, isn't it? Yeah, we talk a lot about Zori Island and how good and quick he is on the wing. Big three and an answer. Yeah. Trey right Crawford. There for Matt yeah. and Trey Crawford. But I'll tell you what, Zori Island is a great player. Or excuse me, Amari Wash is a great player as well as Zori Island. They play very similarly. They're both really quick. They're both able to get to the rim. Look at that high step. Parker Krim rebounds and fights it up through traffic and scores. Parker Krim now has four points. Jesco wanted to unload and couldn't with the defensive pressure. Come out of the timeout, score on two straight possessions. Jackson Foster, three, nope. Was tipped into the corner to Trey Crawford. Foster gets another three, look. That one will bound around, and eventually Amari Wash will rebound. You know, he had a nice little run where he scored a couple buckets in a row and started to help yeah. Bath climb back into it. But since then, he's just not been able to find the bottom of the net, getting some decent looks, but coming up short. That was Azori Island who rebounded the basketball and uh, I think doing just exactly what Coach wanted. Instead of pushing the pace, he set it up so they could get into their offensive set here. Markley's trying to guard him out front. Size against quickness here. And it's tough to guard a guy that quick that far away from the basket. Here's Wash. And he's going to back it out with Eli Jesko playing him. And he goes to the rim and mm. steps through and scores. And Mary, Amari Wash becomes a double figure scorer with 10. Again, very similar to Island in the way he gets to the basket. You saw Zori Island with a nice Euro step, a possession to go. And this time it was Amari Wash gathering and finishing nicely underneath the rim. And trying to work his way to the rim, but losing his balance is Eli Jesko, and he will travel, which allows Jackson Kovalt and Joe Mosley to enter the basketball game. That's the danger of trying to lean on your defender. Eli Jesko trying to lean onto Etzcorn, but Etzcorn had fallen over, so no one there, and he takes the extra step. Zori Island with his 14 points will advance the basketball, and Get Elida into their set. Another spin move for Wash. I wouldn't be surprised if Elida just tried to dribble this out. No more shots. Nice pass from Zori Island. He found Seth Sharp for a basket. Points five and six for Seth. Well, you got to take it if you get it, right? That's you a great do. drive yep. and a great pass. Foster comes off a screen. His little shot rolls around. Sharp with that rebound. With a minute 10 to go in the basketball game. Little Dirk That's Nowitzki impression right there on the <laughs> one-footed fadeaway. Here's Island working out front with Joe Mosley. And timeout coach Tabor. He wants to do this very quickly because he wants to get some subs in. Mason Dayhill wears number 11. Number 35 is Dean Bumgarner. And who is his other sub checked in? Number 11, 5, and 35. Looking nice. to see who I missed. But, oh, number 22 is checked in. That's Jonathan Payne. Mm. I think we got them all now, all the new bodies in. Story Island dribbling out near midcourt. 
Elida with a 20-point lead. This is Dayhill, and he has to give it back up as he couldn't fight his way to the rim. This is Payne out front, and he has to throw it back across court. Elida's going to be very happy to take this 20-point lead, although we're going to get a foul that will go out front, and that will allow Coach Kirk Lozier to sub a little bit. Number zero, Dagan Hawkins will enter. Well, Beth, Beth has some work to do, trying to take care of the basketball. New coach and you know, new, new group of guys out there for the Wildcats. Not much varsity experience amongst them. But two good teams they had to play to start this season and definitely have some tape to look at, address some mistakes, and just work on taking care of the basketball moving forward. You see Island just kind of going to dribble this one out, and Elida will take a 46-26 victory. They will go to 1-1 one and one on the season. The Bass Wildcats will drop to 0-2. Oh Webber and I need to put together our Stolly Hustle Award winner tonight. You can check out our highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner on the WSN YouTube page. And uh, Evan, we met a little bit during that timeout a moment ago. We decided to go with Zori Island tonight. Yeah, a lot of guys with a lot of hustle out there for Elida, but Island led this team in scoring with 14 points, but he led them in many other ways as well. He does a nice job handling the ball, facilitating, keeping the offense moving, and then defensively, many steals, making it hard on back to move the ball around the perimeter, and also rebounding really, really well. So Zori Island, very worthy of a Stolle Insurance Hustle Award this evening. Bath Wildcats will drop to 0-2 on the season. They had quarter scores of 2, 8, 11, and 5 to get them to 26 this season. They were led in scoring by Jackson Foster with 14 points tonight. And we just got our stat page handed to us and very quickly looking for Zach Welch. They got him for six rebounds. He had a whole bunch more than that, I thought, Evan. I thought Zach Welch played very well for them tonight. Yeah, I thought so too. I think Bath, they, they definitely have some players that they can lean on moving forward as they're trying to find their leaders and trying to figure out uh, who, who's going to do the heavy lifting for them, a team that's lost two games in a row to start this season. They've turned the ball over 20 times, at least 20 times in each of them. So they have to find those leaders, and I can certainly see Welsh emerging as one of those. Matt Taylor's team will go to one and one in the season. They had quarter scores of 10, 14, 8, and 14. They were led to scoring by Zori Island with 14. Amari Wash had 10. I want to thank our sponsors tonight, Web Insurance Agency, Four Season Tees, Dr. John Stockler, the State Bank, Metzger Financial Services, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, and Lima Chevrolet Cadillac. Thank them for our sponsorship this evening. As you can see on the court, we've got game number two coming up right after this one as Shawnee and LCC are preparing to play. But Elida takes the consolation match tonight over Bath, 46-26. You've been watching High School Basketball, WOSN.